Being an entrepreneur can be a lonely place. Most businesses don't even get past the first three years. So in this series, we're going to be talking to entrepreneurs that are high performing or high performing businesses that can help you with hints, tips and hacks to help you fast forward your way to success. My name is Mark Burgess. I've got over 20 years experience working as an entrepreneur, building up various different businesses. I've wrote a best selling book, I speak nationally and internationally at different conferences and this is Raising Your Game. On today's episode, I talk to David Marquette. David is a best-selling author, he's an international keynote speaker, and he's the former captain of a US submarine. David talks about how to empower your team and get them to be even more awesome. Okay, David, thanks for coming in today. I know you've got a super busy schedule. Before we get into things, are you all right just to give people a bit of a background on yourself and a bit about you? Sure. I was a, a geeky, snot-nosed, introverted know-it-all. I, I was a kid that, that knew all the answers in high school, but nobody liked. <laughs> and I, I had this um, persona of avoiding people at all, at all costs. But I was passionate about what was going on. I grew up in the 70s, so we're all depressed. Okay, it was just a, a depressing era. And we had this contest with the Soviets, and this, which n no one knew we, we were going to win. It was uncertain. I was like, I'm going to do my part. And so I signed up for the military, which my mom was like, ah, you're like, look at you. You're like this little geeky, <laughs> know-it-all. <laughs> you could get beat up. And I was like, no, no, no. There's these things called submarines. They hide from people. It's perfect for me. And so I went to the submarine force. I did very well. I did very well because I was a know-it-all. And my career, I proceeded very rapidly, to, and I got selected to be a submarine captain at, at a young age. And it was because I could look and see a problem and spot things before others, and I would tell them what to do, and things would temporarily get better. And I was addicted to it. I loved it. I liked, being the, like, I liked people needing me and being the center. It validated me. And then it all changed. Because at the very last minute, I went to a submarine that it wasn't planned to go to. And it was a different kind of submarine. And I show up, and I don't know. I don't know about the buttons. And I started telling people what to do, and, and it worked for like one day. <laughs> and I gave this order that couldn't be done. The officer even repeated it. He said, he, he repeated the order. Basically, it was like if you had a car with only one gear, yeah. and I said, shift to second. And the officer said, shift to second gear. And the, and the poor sailor who was supposed to do it, just went like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I had my EQ hat on that day, so I noticed it. <laughs> and I said, hey, what's going on? He says, Captain. On this ship, on the Santa Fe, it's only one gear. <laughs> it was a newer ship, one of the newest submarines. And I was like, ah, oh, that's embarrassing, because I'm the captain. I'm supposed to know all the answers. But then I looked at the officer, because, I, oh, I can blame you. I said, hey, Bill, what? did you know this? Yes, sir, I did. And he gives me this really awkward, annoying smile. I said, why did you order it? Because you told me to. And I realized my whole leadership thing was about telling people what to do, and it was irrelevant. What I needed was to get people to think, and I couldn't order them to think. So we had to flip everything. I always thought, well, the reason I'm telling you what to do is because you're not telling me what you think. But it's backwards. The reason they're not telling you what they think is because you're telling them what to do. So wow. that's my, and, and then amazing things happen. And what happened with uh, the Santa, Santa Fe? Yeah, so, uh, oh, but the reason I went there on yeah. short notice was because the captain quit. It was the worst submarine. It was, had the worst morale. And uh, we, had, we set records for performance, and we kept every sailor 100% stayed in. And it was just an amazing thing because they, they felt like now they own their job. They, had, they were involved. They felt like they had purpose. Intent was a special word. I said, don't come to me with permission, just say this word, intent. If you use the word intent, it's a magic word, it means you already have permission. So we talk about, oh, I'm gonna empower my guys, but it's this fuzzy, you're empowered, it doesn't mean anything. So I said, if you say the word, I intend to submerge the submarine, you already have permission. I can ask questions, I can stop you, but, so it rippled down. But, the, but to me, the power didn't reveal itself for 10 years because I left the ship. 
And two things happened. The ship continued to win awards. With, I was gone. Well, I can't take, can I take credit for that? And the second thing is 10 of the officers from that ship, 10 of them became submarine commanders. Wow. And it, that took 10 years. And so that's why I think the power is we, we get so addicted to knowing the answers. And then when we leave, things fall apart. And we're like, oh, how great was that? But if you want to build a company that you can sell, you better not do that because the guy's looking to buy your company. They'll get, they're going to see through that. They say, hey, I see a lot of you here. Mm. I see you making all the decisions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So your company's worth this much <laughs> without you. So are you going to still work here? No, no, no. I'm going to my island. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Your company's not worth anything. We're not buying it. And so this is a big ball ha moment. We've got to change our behavior. Yeah. And so you wrote about this in your book, Turn the Ship Around. Yeah. When I read that book, it was some, some major light bulbs went off for me. We kind of try work that way anyway in, inside my organization, but you know, there was so much, so much gold inside that book. But here's, here's some interesting questions for you. <clears throat> so if you're a military guy, you have come through a certain kind of training. You've got a certain kind of mindset. Yeah. For companies outside of the military, they bring in, they've got random types of people working there that come into random organizations and have kind of random onboarding and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. If you just, you just, before putting any sort of a framework in place, you just open up and say, you guys make the decisions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that could go wrong pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. So there's some stages, I'm guessing, before you say, you guys run the show. Yeah, no, exactly. And I made that, I've made that mistake. So what we say is the, your, your, your ability to let people make decisions hinges on two critical factors. Their technical competence. So, so this is kind of obvious. I can't let you make decisions about the nuclear power plant unless you're a trained nuclear power plant operator. I'd have a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you could try. Yeah. And what I call organizational clarity. What are we trying to do and how are we trying to do it? One of the best clarity questions, very simple. What's the time frame over which you're trying to optimize this decision? So you let someone say, hey, we're gonna launch, we're gonna launch a product in next week, but we know it's not perfect. How, it, how bad is it? We haven't done all the testing. So we have to make a decision, launch or don't launch. The question is, what's the time frame over which that decision is gonna be? What are you thinking of? This quarter, we gotta meet quarterly revenue goals? That'll push you one way, this quarter or this quarter century. Typically, the higher you get in the organization, we see people that have longer. And so, so you gotta ask these questions. And so the job now becomes not just saying, Oh, you do it. And the other, the other key thing is intent means you're still talking about it before you do it. I'm not talking about go do it. I don't like that. You don't want that, especially on nuclear reactor. Oh yeah, we did something different. Well, let me tell you how it worked out. <laughs> no. So you say, here's, 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 what I, here's what I intend to do with this product launch. Here's what I intend. And we're going to go meet with a new client, potential new client tomorrow. tomorrow. Here's what I intend to do. It's a new client, new, new, new business line, new city. We're going to do it for free, what, whatever. Okay, well, let's talk about it. How are you offering? What's the, what's the time frame? So we call it, you got to tune the authority to competence and clarity. That's the decision you make. Yeah. It's not a light switch. This is one of the big decisions. Well, you made, I made the decision yesterday, you make it tomorrow. Yeah. No, that's not going to work. Did you find in the, through the process of doing that in the submarine and with all the businesses that you've worked with, that part of that process is that they will just find that they possibly have people who don't have the technical capabilities to work that way. Yeah, I, I think this is a huge, <laughs> I personally think this is a huge problem. Uh, but you got to remember, I came from the nuclear Navy where knowing your technical, it was everything. Like being able to talk to human beings, no one cared. <laughs> but if, if you could take a test on the nuclear reactor, you could draw all the systems from memory, then there, you, were, you were our kind of guy. Yeah. So I go to businesses all the time my perspective is, it's so bad, they're afraid to find out how bad it is. I said, why don't you give your people a test to see, do they actually know how to code? Or do they know, uh, I was on a construct, working with a construction company, do they actually know the capabilities of these different kinds of equipment? How many, and they're like, yeah, of course we do. I said, well, okay, how many gallons per minute does that concrete pump pump? Uh, well, a lot. Like, could you put an, could you define, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Because you have to make decisions about the timing and when the truck's gonna show up and different things. 
you can make better, more informed decisions if you actually know. And I think this is a big problem, and we're sort of afraid. To, well, you got a certificate in air conditioning 25 years ago, so you're probably good to go. Mm. Yeah. 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 And uh, I think also a lot of businesses, they don't have the data to hands in order to be able to make those decisions. Yeah. You know, they're just base, basing a lot of things on gut feeling, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. And so the leader of the organization usually has the most experience. He's got the most gut feeling. Right. And the younger people haven't got the experience to make any sort of a gut feeling. There's no data to hand. Right. So. Right. So it's all we're operating on gut feel. And my gut is more important than your gut. So we're going to go with my gut. Yeah. That's an interesting thing because I think emotions and that gut feel it plays an important role after we, we've based on the science or as much as, as we can. But at the end of the day, you can't know everything and you're making all decisions play out in the future. So that means there's a degree of uncertainty. What do you think about um, the idea that <clears throat> you start a business um, and you do everything because you're the only person there. Yeah. Right. And then sounds like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then as the business grows, yeah, uh, you get someone to do some of the stuff you've been doing. Yeah. So you tell them how to do it. Yeah. And this goes on and on and on until you've got I don't know twelve people, but they're basically extensions of your hands. Yeah. So they always come to you for questions because they don't they never invented any part of that system themselves. Right. And so you end up in that situation you were talking about, whereby you just tell people what to do. Yeah. And then at some point you uh, return the ship around, or you know, for whatever reason. Or you have a hundred people. For, for whatever reason it is, you yeah. suddenly decide. You know what? We should. These people should be telling us what to do. They're they're the ones running the systems. Yeah. Um, and then the 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 decisions that are coming back don't match with yours. So I feel like at that point you've got two paths you can go down. One is that you say not like that, like this. In which case you're going to kill all all forms of creativity in the future. Yeah. Or you kind of accept what they're doing, knowing that you would probably do it differently. So you're not going to get the perfect solution, but you are nurturing their creativity for the future. Yeah. Right? How, how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's exactly the problem <clears throat> that I, I think every business leader has. And, you could, and uh, it, it, one simplistic answer isn't going to answer that, but you can practice. And I, I uh, met up with a, a guy named Robert Stevens, who's an entrepreneur in the States. He founded a company called Geek Squad, which did really, really well and got bought for X billion dollars. And he gave me this tip. He said, it's about practicing giving up control. Go to a, the next time you go to a restaurant, get the server to choose for you. Wow. So not, well, would you, do you want chicken or fish? I, I'm saying, I don't want you, I don't want to know what it is until you bring it to me. Because <laughs> wow. that's going to do two things. One, you have to live with that anxiety and you have to kind of parse, because you're going to narrow it. Like if, you have, if you're allergic to peanuts, right? You got to say that. Yeah, yeah, that's a course. clarity thing. That's but, the framework. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> But they have the competence, they have the information about the, uh, the kitchen, so why not give them the authority? It's about giving, pushing the authority to where the information is. Yeah. So they have more information, so I'm gonna push them. But it's also about making it safe for them. Because they're gonna be like, yeah, you're gonna give me a bad trip advisor, and what if you don't like it? Say, no, I already gave you five stars. We're good. So I love this because you have to create a human connection. Mm. You gotta deal with the anxiety. But it's about practice. Do that 10 times, then, Try it, it works. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, we've got to go to a break. Um, second half, I want to talk about a new book that you're bringing out. Super. Don't go away. Okay, welcome back. So, first half of the show, we were just started digging into how you should uh, allow your team to be not just empowered from a fluffy point of view, yeah. but empowered from the point of view of their intent that they're gonna do this thing, is that gonna be okay? And their why behind why they're doing that stuff. Yep. I know you've got uh, a new book coming out, Leadership is Language. Yes. That's right. Tell me a little bit about that. First of all, it was a big struggle, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I'm super jazzed about it. So here's what was happening. On the submarine, you pay a lot of attention to words. So for example, Let's say someone's about to shoot a torpedo, but you, don't, you want them not to. We, we discovered that's really a hospital ship at the very last second. And, and so if you said, don't shoot, 
the don't could be someone could be shutting a valve right at the moment or sneeze, and so all they hear is shoot. So now you just killed the wrong people. Yeah. So we would never say don't shoot. So we, we, we spent an inordinate amount of time saying, how exactly do we want to say that? And, and the question I keep asking, what would it sound like if? So when we go to companies, we say, what would it sound like if? I say, what do you want your people? I want people to take ownership. What would it sound like, people? What would it sound like if everyone took ownership? Well, I don't know. Okay, well, let's work on that for a little bit. And so we would come up with the words. And so this new book is, it's a word manual. And uh, the way I think about it is re-scripting re the plays. I think a lot of times the words that we say are programmed plays that have been embedded from us, fundamentally from the Industrial Revolution, but and with a little bit of, of, of high school thrown, yeah. <laughs> uh, thrown in. And so when someone says something to us like, oh, I don't like that jacket, and it doesn't look good on you, we, we, we defend, we respond, reply, react. In business, this is not helpful. What you want to do is wade into that. You want to say, oh, you see something different than I see. Tell me more about that. But that be curious, not compelling, for me, is not the instinctive reaction. And so the book is, hey, here this, here what, here's what we program to do. This might be a little more helpful. And so it's just little phrases. Yeah, that's interesting. So you mentioned there about like uh, your program from Industrial Revolution and high school yeah. and that sort of th stuff on the basis that you know, we're all going to sit in rows and we're all going to turn up at a certain exactly. time and go home at a certain time and yeah. uh, work towards the clock, I guess. So, yeah, so the Industrial Revolution was about... Uh, there, so there are two fundamental things. One, it's about manufacturing, which means I have to reduce variability. I want every part the same. I want every piece the same. And then human, the workforce, were the ones doing that. So the whole organization is designed to get things the same, conform, comply. And we separate the people making the decisions from the people doing the doing. We're management, you're the workers. And now, when we want people to think, there's two problems. Number one, thinking is an embrace variability sport. And it benefits from, hey, let's cast a wide, let's get a bunch of ideas. Oh, you think differently than me, great. Not, oh, you made the part different, that's, that's bad. So now what we knew, need to do is balance and we flip back and forth. We raise our heads, we cast, we get wide perspective. What does everybody think? Then we make a commitment and we dive in with deep focus and we try it for a month or a week or a year or whatever. And then we raise our heads. And so I think the right rhythm of business is not we're sort of focused and then we're sort of broadly perspective and it's sort of a, 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 sort of a mess, but we're precisely focused and then we're broad, as broad as possible. And so it's almost, it's, it's almost a bi-stable. It's way one way and then it's way another way. Wow, that's crazy. So it's like you're precisely focused on being broadly focused. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, well, the fact that you know that at some time in the future, I like the idea of an expiration date. So people think it's like two head, we're gonna have an initiative, we're gonna change, we're gonna, we're gonna onboard our customers. We're gonna change the way we onboard our customers. Like, well, we argue about it all day. Well, this could be slightly better. Like, you know, forget it. Is it just reasonable enough to think it's a good idea? Yeah, okay, so we're, this is what we're gonna try our hypothesis is we will be more successful, we'll get them faster to where we need to with this. Let's try it for a quarter. Yeah. Then it's like, it's light, it's easy, okay, fine. And it cues people into learning mode. Because now they're like, oh, well, we're gonna have a meeting in three months where we're gonna talk about what we learned. So now they're paying attention. Yeah. I find with uh, our team, um, and from my own experience, that a lot of the time the team will, um, do something. I don't know. Let's just say that they've come up with a, a, a new marketing campaign. Yeah. They've built the landing page. They've created the email template. They're, yeah. gonna, they're just about to send it out. Right. Just about to shoot the torpedo. Yeah. Right? Push the button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and they'll go, Mark, do you want to just check it all through? Yeah. And I find that if I, in the past, would have been like, yeah, hundred percent, I want to check it all through. Yeah. But I find that if I say, if you say it all works, I trust you. Yeah. They go. Mm, Maybe we'll just check it all over again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. So, like, Isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So well, like, it's like, oh, yeah, not, not. And, and and it's like, okay, and it's and, and in a way, like it, 
I know, I know I keep using this word empowerment, but it, it does make someone feel like you're in control of your own destiny. Right. This whole, if this whole thing goes wrong, you could have avoided it. Right. Now you could check it again. Would that be a good idea? Right. Or do you think you've checked it enough? Right. If you tell me you've checked it enough, you've checked it enough. That's brilliant. I, yeah, because they can't then say later, well, well, Mark, you, you checked it. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, what yeah. would happen. Now, I, what, I love the fact that they invited you to look at it before they, they put it out there. We think this is really important, this idea of inviting feedback beforehand. But um, so, the, so the way we would look at that is we would say, oh, well, what were the words that you used? So the words that you used were, when you guys think you're ready, launch it. I'm, I'm good. I'll stand behind you. So wh whatever those words were, yeah. the way we would talk to our clients is we would say, we wouldn't give them a big lecture of empowerment, but we would say, you know, the next time your team brings you something, Say that, or you could look at it just to make sure there's not something that'll. Yeah. Uh, but what you got to resist is it's 98% good, and you see you're gonna see a, a way to make it better. Yeah. It's always e easier to to take something that someone else has done and figure out how to make it better. And every once in a while, if it's not gonna sink your ship, just say, "Yeah, brilliant, brilliant," because you're rewarding the behavior you want, which is they took initiative, they were thoughtful, they came up with something that was really, really good. Yeah. A lot of our um, clients work in the uh, real estate sector, and I feel like they, <clears throat> they build this structure, probably based around uh, you know, the industrial way of working. Yeah. They build this structure as to how we work. These are our targets. This is how we take on a certain amount of properties. This is how we sell a certain amount of properties. And then they employ people to carry out those tasks, and then they get super frustrated that those people won't think for themselves. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? right. And when you put it like that, it's yeah. kind of obvious. Yeah, really, exactly, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. So you hired a bunch of people and you told them what to do, and then you're. And here's another thing. Here's the thing I like to do. When I'm going to go work with a company, I pull their, their job adverts. And what the job advert says we're looking for a junior account manager to perform the following tasks <laughs> like blah, 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 blah and additional tasks as a sign. That's what we like to say in the States. And then, and then I, so I hold that up and say, what do you guys think of this? Uh, so we, uh, because our construct is the folk, we call that, do, we call that red work, the, the doing work, and then we call thinking and decision making, we call that blue work. So this is a red work description. And then when the per like if I were there, I was like, and they said, where's your thinking? I was like, it's not in the yeah. job description. You, <laughs> you didn't never, hire. You never asked me. Exactly. <laughs> so like, start with your job descriptions. What do you want? Yeah. Like, yeah. We're looking for someone who can make decisions about blank. Yeah. And, there will be, and not just doing objectives, but learning. Yeah. We need to learn more about blank. And I guess like in terms of the language, the questions, like you say, if you were sitting with a company like that, you, you might say, what would, what would great look like for yeah. you guys and if they said I don't know we just we want people to think more about the experience that they are uh, giving to customers when they're showing them new properties or something like that yeah so I'm guessing like behind that is the language of like okay so if your people are always coming to you saying I made this decision because I was thinking this would be the experience yeah they're always thinking about the experience yeah. then like I guess like that starts to that so that would be a clarity thing where we, I want you to focus on the what someone experiences the moment the door opens. Mm -hmm. I, and, but I would rather, I mean, if things get really busy, they're gonna have to make decisions. Yeah. But we really like intent. I like them to say, this is what I've been, this is the way I've been showing the house. For example, um, when I look at a house, I don't want, I don't need the realtor to come in and say, well, this is the, this is the kitchen. I'm like, the no way. <laughs> I, I would have missed that. Like, I can see it. It's the kitchen. And <laughs> it feels sort of like they're, and I'm like, just let me walk around. But some people, maybe they want to be invited through the house. So reading the person and figuring out, is this a person who just said, like, leave me alone, or yeah. I'll lead you through the house person. This is something I think is probably important for these. And so how do you make that, how do you make that assessment? And if they say, well, I used to do it this way, I used to bring everyone through the house, but now I'm starting to change, but I would like them to say it ahead of time. So yeah. my plan is, I'm gonna try this for a week. Yeah. I'm gonna see what happens. I'll call you in a week, I'll let you know how it went. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I feel, that, that'll activate the learning. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if there's a business owners out there that are sort of wondering, how do I even start? Where do I even begin with this? Yeah. Like, what, what would you say is like the foundations for them to start trying to do this kind of okay, stuff? Okay, so you have to, first of all, go to dinner 
at a restaurant, don't order. Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm <laughs> ten gonna do that. Yeah, ten times. Uh, send me an email. Let me know how yeah, it goes. I'm gonna do that. And but sometimes you won't do it. You won't be able to do it. And, and I guess so, your your framework for the person is like, I like I like meat. I'm allergic to peanuts. You go for it. Something like that. Yeah. Right. Something like that. And some. For some servers, that'll be enough. They'll yeah. be fine. And some servers will say like, um, could you, <laughs> Which one of them? Could you tell me more? <laughs> like, is it this? And, 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 and so that's what, and so that human interaction is what I want you to practice. Yeah. Uh, I, like, I know, uh, well, I'll just let, I'll just let, I'll, encouraging yeah, just go, to get pra to the stage yeah, practice that. You'll see you can't do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. You start with changing your trigger responses. So, the, uh, here's a couple of triggers. Someone comes in and says, tell me what to do, or some code of, for tell me what to do. Don't tell them what to do. Right. Just tell them, say, tell me more about it. Descri you want to go to description. Don't try and say, well, what would you do? Mm. That's too big. Well, tell me more. Describe. What, how, how do you see it? Then what do you think? Then what do you, like if I weren't here, what would you do? You couldn't talk to me. What would you do without me? Well, mm. blah, blah. I would talk to these other people. I'd double check, and then I would do this. Great, why don't you do that? So it's a graduated thing. Yeah. It's not, boom. Yeah. Uh, so a, a, another trigger is when someone says, hey, I, I don't agree with you. Or they come to you and say, well, okay, great, you've empowered me, here's what I intend to do. And you're like, no, oh, that's a bad mm. idea. How do you respond? Mm. Do you say, no, that's a bad idea, let me tell you why. Or do you say, well, you know, did you, have you thought about the customer experience here? Like, oh my gosh, I never did, which is probably unlikely. Yeah. So instead, what I want you to do is be curious, not compelling. Come from a position that they may actually be right. Now, after you listen, huh. you may decide they really don't, it's, they're not right. And you say, okay, look, here's what we're going to do, though. Can you do it? Yeah, fine. They'll walk away saying, well, at least they heard me out. And they'll be less likely to shut down. And if they have ideas in the future, they're, they're going to come out with them, which is what you want. Yeah. So don't tell them what to do. <laughs> yeah. And when you hear something wrong, react with curiosity. First of all, because it's embraced variability. Like, oh, great, you think differently than me. So would you say then, to, to kind of put that in a nutshell, your job is no longer to decide all the functions. Your job is to nurture your team. Yeah. Your job, if you're a decision maker, you're an individual contributor. I don't care what your title says. If you've built a factory for making decisions, now you're a leader. Yeah. That's a company you can sell. Yeah, that's amazing. I've got one more question before we wrap it up. What happens when the waitress brings you a load of food you don't like? Well, you <laughs> go to McDonald's on your way out. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Listen, I know, uh, as I say, your new book comes out in February. Yeah. I think February the 6th yeah, that's in right. the UK. Yep. Um, and it's called... Leadership is Language. Leadership is Language. Highly recommend it. If anyone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, so um, I'm L. Da Lewis L. David Marquet on uh, Twitter. Uh, say hi on Twitter. Connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, our website, davidmarquet.com, and, and we call it intent-based leadership. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming Thanks in. Thanks a lot. It was awesome. a lot of fun.